This is a phone, but it's not running Android or iOS. It's actually running Windows 11. I've managed to get Windows 11 running natively on this Windows phone. No, it's an Android phone running Windows, not one of those Windows phones. They're a disaster. But the real question is, can we actually game on Windows 11 on this phone? That's what we're gonna be trying in this video. You see, I've tried turning phones into gaming PCs by using Samsung DeX and Red Magic's desktop modes. However, they did not come close to Windows 11 in terms of PC game compatibility and just general game selection. I was very limited to mobile games and just a couple of PC games that you can emulate on it. So the big problem with Android is that although mobile gaming and emulation has come a very long way recently, it's still not up to standard with Windows 11 when it comes to PC gaming. So I figured if I just install Windows 11 on a phone, then surely it should run all of our PC games. And this is the true gaming PC phone, right? So if you want to install Windows 11 on your phone, don't bother. It's taken me forever to do this. I actually thought I'd bricked my phone, but thanks to a special software, I was able to save it. What we're going to be using is Project Renegade, which is a community-driven project basically allowing us to install Windows on a handful of Android phones, utilizing the Windows on ARM version of Windows. If you don't know what any of that meant, basically there's a special version of Windows designed for ARM chips, such as Qualcomm Snapdragon Surface computers and all the other Snapdragon X Elite laptops. We can actually use that special version of Windows and slap it on an Android phone and see if it will work. Now, the real problem is that we can't just install Windows on any old phone. There's a very, very small list of supported phones on the Project Renegade website. So forget trying to install Windows on an S25 Ultra or S24 Ultra. It just will not work. So I actually had to go out and buy a special phone in order to do this video. But which one did I choose? Let's cut to the unboxing and I'll show you. All right, guys. So it's time to unbox the phone of choice for installing Windows on. Let's take a look. And here it is. The phone itself. This is the Xiaomi Mi 9T Pro. I hope I'm getting that right. So yeah, this is a Xiaomi phone from 2019 and it's quite cool. Lots of people have been telling me to do videos on Xiaomi phones before and while this is quite an old one and they have come a very long way since releasing this, this phone natively supports Windows 11 because it's got a Snapdragon 855 processor. So this is basically all the phone that we need. I managed to get this second hand on eBay eBay. So let's power it on and see if we've got any life in it. And we do. Also in the box, we have got a charger. No cable though, which is a bit weird. Me UI. Oh, and there's no setup screen. It seems that it's already been set up for us. Yeah, they've got a control center down here, notifications. It's quite cool, but we're not gonna be using Me UI. We're gonna be installing something a little bit different. So let's get into it. This phone actually has quite a lot of support for it in the custom ROM community. And Project Renegade is no exception for this phone. So now let's install Windows on it, which is a lot easier said than done. So I followed the Windows on ARM Raphael manual install guide. Raphael is what this phone is also known as, which is pretty cool. The first step was installing TWRP on this phone, something that I haven't done since the old custom ROM days. Oh, it was so nostalgic. But that was fairly straightforward and we actually had to install a special version in order for this to work. Now the next step is where things went very wrong for me. It came to actually partitioning the phone storage. Now when I originally tried this, there was an old guide which I followed and and it completely ruined my phone. But luckily the guide has now been updated and there's a manual and automatic version. Right now the automatic partition scripts do not work so you have to do the manual guide. But it's fairly straightforward. All you do is just copy and paste the commands one after another and it will eventually partition your phone and you won't mess it up like I did. By the way, if you guys are enjoying this video, definitely make sure to subscribe to my channel. I'm not joking, this video has been weeks in the making. It's taken me forever to not only only install Windows on the phone, but also do this gaming test as well. So a sub to the channel would mean a lot, and I really want to try and hit 300k subscribers this year. So hopefully you guys can help me out. Anyway, back to the video. The next step was routing the phone with MagDisk, something that I've done many times before, so it was fairly straightforward and easy for me to do. And finally, the last step was actually installing Windows on the phone itself. This very 
Clever Guide has helped me partition my phone's internal drive and make an ESP partition, which I can then assign a letter drive to, like I would as if it was just an external drive attached to my PC. And while setting that all up, check out this t-shirt I've been wearing, which was sent to me by Into the AM. It looks pretty cool, right? This is the Rustic Escape graphic t-shirt. The fabric is really nice and soft, lightweight, and honestly, it fits me really well, which is something I don't always get with graphic t-shirts. And this isn't just some random print either. Each shirt is made by actual artists who care about making something unique and the print quality is really nice too. They've got tons of different styles from space inspired to clean minimalist looks. So whether you want to stand out or keep it subtle, they've got you covered. I've been slowly trying to upgrade my wardrobe this year and Into the AM is definitely helping me with that. Personally, I love this one because just look at the design on the back. Wouldn't you just like to be there? But if you're ready to upgrade your wardrobe, check out Into the AM using my link in the video description. You'll get 10% off your order and thank you to Into the AM for sponsoring this video. From there, we can simply apply a Windows ESD. Make sure it's Windows 11 24H2. The guide specifically says that anything old will not work. Then it was just a case of installing a pre-made driver pack for this phone. This will ensure everything will work such as the touch screen, the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth and pretty much everything that we will need because without the drivers this would be fairly useless. Then we just needed to make the drive bootable and one of the most underrated features about this is we can actually dual boot Android and Windows 11 on this phone. Honestly you don't realize how good this is. All you do is just open up the application on Windows it then starts to restart and then it just turns on and boots up just like it would when it's running Android. And there we go. Now to switch back to Windows, all we do is just go on the WOA helper and then simply just press quick boot to Windows. And then the phone restarts and now Windows is booting up again. It is super cool. And there we go. So we can run Windows 11 in portrait mode, vertical mode, or we can just flip the screen and run it just like we would on a normal desktop. It is a super cool experience. Now, a couple of caveats other than the very complicated install method and having to have one of the very few phones supported by Project Renegade itself is that some of the features on this phone just don't work. So this pop-up selfie camera that we have on this phone which is kind of cool does not work. In fact not even the back camera is supported and the battery also drains really quickly now that we're running Windows natively on this phone and to charge it it takes forever. So the thing that I found is I just boot into Android, charge it and then boot back into Windows and that's how I've been running it. Anyway, you don't care about all of that. How well is this thing actually going to game? Well, let's plug it in and see how we get on. Oh yeah, and by the way, you can't actually connect this to an external monitor. So looks like we're going to be recording the phone screen again. Enjoy. Okay, so this is the current setup we've got on my desk. So we've got the phone, which is wirelessly casting its screen to my main computer where I'm recording it. We've got a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse connected up to the phone. And this is pretty much how I'm going to game. I'm not going to be looking at my monitor because the latency is awful. So we're going to be trying to play through the phone screen, but you guys will be watching the screen capture. Hopefully that makes sense. So here is Windows 11 on our phone and it is super cool. So just to prove that it is working on our phone and I'm not using a secret laptop or something under the desk. Hey, look at that. Snapdragon 855, six gigabytes of RAM, which probably isn't going to be the best for gaming, but we'll definitely try it out. So it's been a little bit hit or miss as to what games actually run on Windows on ARM, but I've managed to find a few and I was actually very surprised by how many games actually do run on here. So let's start off with good old Minecraft Bedrock Edition, which you can quite easily get on Android. So I expect this should run absolutely no problem at all. But bear in mind, this is the Windows version of Minecraft Bedrock Edition. So it may be a bit more challenging, but let's see. So keyboard and mouse support works. And if I disconnect the keyboard and mouse, touchscreen controls work as well, just like they would if I was playing this on the regular Android application. We've got it on pretty much the lowest settings you can possibly get. Apologies for the quality. Obviously, this is streaming from my phone onto my PC, so there'll be a bit of it's not really the best. Oh, yeah, this is a real test for my Wi-Fi connection, but it saves recording the phone screen, which is a complete pain. But still, yeah, Minecraft 
Minecraft Bedrock Edition runs on here. And quick little test. Ooh, phone is getting quite hot. And as you can see, we can use touch screen on the phone, which is good. So we can look around. And we obviously get the touch screen controls, which are really difficult to use. I prefer just to use keyboard and mouse. And that works just fine. Next up, we're going to be trying out Minecraft Java Edition, pushing it a little bit further. So to get Minecraft Java Edition on here was very difficult, actually. You can't just get it off Java's website. You have to get a special version of Java. The standard Minecraft launcher just doesn't work. So we're using MultiMC with a custom version of Java that should hopefully work. Let's load up the latest 1.21.4 and see how it runs on here. And here it is, 1.21.4. I believe this is vanilla. We don't have Optifine or anything like that. And we're actually on fancy graphics as well. We haven't turned down any of these settings. Let's take a look at our frames. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> I just saw it drop down to about 10 FPS there. And as we're walking along here, not the best performance really. But this is the latest version of Minecraft and it's meant for PCs. But we are on quite high video settings. So let's give it the benefit of the doubt and turn them down. Right, so I've just quickly turned down the video settings. Like I said, we don't have Optifine or anything. But already this feels a lot smoother. Let's take a look at our frames. 30 frames. I mean, it's respectable, I suppose. The question is, would we get more frames on Android if we used a special launcher to get Java Edition Minecraft running? I don't know, to be honest. I'm sure we could maybe get a bit more if we had Sodium, Fabric, or Optifine. Let's play some games that you can't get on Android or emulate very well. Now, surprisingly, I've actually been able to install Steam on this phone, and I've actually been able to get some of the games running running on here. The only problem that I've had is lack of storage because when I was partitioning the drive on this phone, I only gave myself a four gigs of storage. And bear in mind, Windows takes up about half of that. I can install all the games on my Steam library because they're just huge. So I've installed a couple of basic games and these seem to run just fine. For example, we can play Among Us. I don't believe you can play this on Android. You might be able to, but this is the Steam version of Among Us that does actually work on this phone. You can't use the touchscreen controls, unfortunately, so you have to use a keyboard and mouse like I'm doing here, but it runs. And unfortunately, the resolution's a bit weird. I don't know why that is. Oh, wow. The sound comes through my headphones. Yeah, I'm not going to play a game of Among Us. It just takes forever, but it works on the phone. So that's pretty cool. Another game that I managed to get running is Axiom Soccer, which is basically like Rocket League. It's kind of a knockoff Rocket League, but it does surprisingly run on this phone, which is insanely cool. This is Axiom Soccer that we're currently playing on the phone, and it is very, very laggy. As you can see here, it's not the best in terms of performance, but the graphics is definitely a step up from Minecraft and all the other games that we've been playing so far among us as well. I think we tried. Can I score with like 10 FPS? Probably not. Now, one of the annoying things about playing these kind of games with keyboard and mouse is that I much prefer controller. And if only there was a way that we could turn this phone into a kind of gaming handheld and have controllers on either side. So how can we turn our Xiaomi phone into a gaming handheld? So I printed this model right here, which once we add a rubber band on the back, it turns into a clamp for our phone. And at the sides here, we have a channel, which allows us to clip in some Joy-Cons from a Nintendo Switch. Then I just need to pair the controller to my phone and use a special software to remap the controls. And now we have a proper gaming handheld running Windows 11. And here it is, our gaming handheld that we can now use rather than our keyboard and mouse. And straight away, this feels so much easier to play with. Granted, our frames are still not the best. Oh wow, and we've even got this Microsoft Capture when I press this button. We've got a screenshot button that works as well. Right. Right, so I've turned down our video settings and it's actually playable now. Now, can we score? Boom, there we go. I scored, see? Using a handheld controller makes things so much easier. Right, so now that we've played Axiom Soccer, Minecraft and some other games, it's time to take things up a step further. And the problem with that is this is where games start to get really big to the point where they won't fit on the phone's internal storage. Luckily, we have got this, an external SSD, which I've got a couple of games loaded on too. Now it was a bit of a pain actually getting support for external drives to work. I had to get the right drivers in order to get this drive to connect to the phone. It should just be a plug and play solution. So I plugged in the drive and it's come up. Brilliant. This is my games drive. I've got loads of games and stuff on here. So one of the most popular Steam games and one that I've been really determined to get running on this phone 
is Counter-Strike 2. And this is a game that we're definitely going to need our keyboard and mouse for. All right, so we've just launched CSGO 2 and this does not look good. So we're just on the main menu here and we've got artifacts all over the screen. It's really weird, actually. Should we try and join a game and see what happens? All right, so it's looking good so far. The map, there's no uh, artifacts or anything. So that's good. I think it's probably going to crash. Oh, okay. I think it's kicked me out of the game. We could spectate. We can at least see if we can get a game running. <laughs> Average zero FPS. Oh, and we've disconnected, which I think is probably a Wi-Fi problem because we're obviously streaming our phone to the screen. We don't really have much bandwidth to uh, play a game of CSGO, at least not competitively. So that's a big fail for CSGO, unfortunately. Oh my God. Let's see if this will actually run and how well it will run. Hopefully it runs a lot better than CSGO did. So far, we've only managed to get GTA 5 running on a handful of Samsung phones, and that was using WinLater and Game Fusion in order to emulate it. But I've never actually natively run Windows on a phone to play GTA. It's a good job we've got our external hard drive because we would not be able to fit this on our internal storage. Oh my goodness it's working and we've got keyboard and mouse support as well it's very laggy this is quite slow performance it feels like we're playing in slow motion right now but we've actually got gta 5 running on this phone this is incredible we are getting quite a lot of artifacts on screen i see that as well on the phone screen it's not a casting problem yeah it just feels like we're playing in slow motion for some reason and also if we get our gaming handheld if we were to clip the phone into this we can also use this controller as well to play GTA. It's just insane. Right, let's see if we can turn down some of these settings. I mean, just look at our video memory. Only 2,810 megabytes. I'm surprised it even runs, to be honest. Okay, we've got all of this stuff off. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to put the settings down too much. I think it's probably on the lowest. It's got a little bit better, I suppose. Not too bad. I honestly can't believe this is actually working. GTA 5. The fact that this runs, but not CSGO, is quite interesting, actually. The graphics are decent actually. I never actually thought we would see GTA running. And with GTA 6 just around the corner, do you reckon I'll be able to get that running on a phone one day? We'll have to see. So overall, I'm pretty impressed we've managed to get Windows 11 running on an Android phone. Now the gaming performance was a bit hit or miss, but we've managed to get GTA running on this phone, which is definitely an achievement by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, this is a 2019 phone running GTA, running Windows. It's incredible, honestly, what we've managed to achieve in this video. It's taken lots of hard work to pull this off so definitely leave a like on this video and let me know what you think in the comment section down below. So yeah, what should we do with this phone next? I might try some custom ROMs on here. We're probably not going to keep Windows on here, I don't think. I definitely want to get a later phone which may have better specs and may run games on here a lot better, but we'll see in the future. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next video.